Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's install, we're doing an amplifier and subwoofer in this 2007 Nissan Altima. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to integrate that amp and sub to an existing aftermarket radio. Let's get started. So here at the bench, the parts that we're installing here today is this amp and sub combo by Rockford Fosgate. For the amp, this is the Prime R1200.1D, does 1200 watts, RMS at one ohm. Um, it's an awesome amp, especially for its size. And the subwoofers are these 10 inch P3s um, in a ported box that are already in the trunk of the car. Now, to wire everything up here, we do need some sort of wiring kit, and based on the current draw that this is thing's going to pull for a 4 gauge, we want OFC. So we went with the Scar Audio amplifier wiring kit. It's oxygen free copper, it's a 4 gauge kit, comes with power, ground, remote wire, RCA speaker wire, uh, fuse and fuse holder, all the accessories to get it installed within your vehicle. So first things first, let's head to the car, start planning our wire route from the battery area. We want to go through that inline fuse as close as possible to the battery, through that fuse, through the firewall, into the cabin of the car. Our plan here today is to install this amplifier under the passenger front seat. Now our battery happens to be here on the driver's side, front corner, positive and negative here. Now we want to connect our power wire to the positive post right here, not that other post. The positive post as close to the terminal as possible is not behind any sort of factory fuse as we don't want to add an extra load on that fuse. So we'll connect our own wire to that nut right there and then uh, install our fuse holder as close as possible and then run it through the firewall to the passenger front seat. Now to give us a little bit more space to fit back behind onto the firewall, we have the V6. So it's a lot tighter than the four cylinder version of the Ultima. We still went ahead and pulled out the top of the air box just to give us a little bit more wiggle room. Now the factory grommet is really, really thick. There's no way to actually add additional accessories through it. In most instances on this Ultima, unless you can find a better alternative, which you can post in the comments, we're gonna drill. And today we drilled a half inch hole with just a big half inch drill bit. And uh, we're gonna show you exactly where that went through. So grabbing our light here, you can kind of see that hole right there. Half inch hole. And we already went ahead and put our grommet in there. It's a little half inch grommet that will fit in that location. Up underneath the steering column here, comes out right, right there. So there's that little hole, but there's plenty of space there. So we went right through there and uh, what we're going to do is now feed our wire through. Here's the big half inch drill bit that we used. We had to use a couple extensions. It's pretty deep back in there, but uh, we worked our way up to this size, um, starting with uh, just a small pilot hole. After a couple of passes, finally we used the half inch and we are now through. All right, so we went ahead and fed our wire in there, put a grommet in, a little half inch grommet. Power wire goes on through here and we split loomed it and we fished it right out there. We're gonna cut the split loom to length. Probably gonna put our fuse holder right around this location. We're gonna build a little uh, sandwich mount out of ABIS plastic. Have it right about here. And then again, we're gonna go right to that center terminal there. And uh, yeah, so let's go inside and show you where that passes on through. It's kind of right to that hole that we created in the carpet. It's right there. And now we have all this length of wire that we're gonna run over to underneath the passenger front seat. So we finished running our wire through, all split loomed here. It comes up right here. Now we grabbed a piece of ABS plastic here, mounted our fuse holder to it, and uh, and we actually sandwiched that underneath the battery bracket. So the fuse holder is actually not going anywhere and it's very easily serviceable, especially if you have to replace the battery. Then we have a nice short lead that'll go right there as soon as we're ready to hook that up. So we're done here actually at the battery. Besides hooking this up, at this point, we'll turn our attention over to the inside of the car to start running that power wire to underneath the passenger front so seat. We created this ABS mount here. Um, it's a 12 by 16 sheet. In most instances, we'll actually cut it and fit it to size, but this fits perfectly between the uh, seat rails 
and uh, it'll be clamped down and it'll tack the carpet and it won't go anywhere once the seat is installed. So we don't need to put any holes or anything like that in this one specifically. We have put holes for zip ties, kind of like what we've done here with our speaker wire, um, but uh, we're gonna run our RCs or remote turn on wires separately. And obviously we've already started to run our power wire and that's already done, but we've went ahead and prepared our speaker wire output. We ran two runs of this uh, 16 gauge OFC wiring, uh, which will go all the way to the trunk. So this is about as far as we can get here on the bench. So what we can do is now take this over to the car to start prepping the install uh, up and we went ahead and fished our RCAs and our remote turn on wire up into the dash here. Now you didn't see us remove the radio here to make this connection because we covered that in great detail when we did the radio and backup camera video installs. So check those videos on out. They'll walk you through step-by-step -step on dash disassembly in the event you do have an aftermarket radio here and you're simply connecting your wiring to it. So at this time, what we need to do is plug these RCA ends into the subwoofer output on the back of the radio. And this uh, remote turn on wire needs to go to the radio's blue white wire. And what that's gonna do is provide that trigger to tell the amp to turn on when the radio turns on. So let's make those two connections. Alright, so that's how our wire comes down here. It's just right behind the bracket, not going to impact or interfere with our parking brake cable whatsoever. Um, but we followed that down along this kind of loop here, and then we actually ran it over on top of the transmission tunnel, back behind the center console there, and we fished the wire that way up underneath the carpet here, so it goes up and up and over. over we just pulled back our carpet here as you can see and uh, now we ran that along through our loops here we pulled up our carpet fished up underneath and our power wire goes now into our amplifier positive our ground ran it through the same vent hole and that just comes up here we need to make our ground same with our speaker wire outputs now finally you saw us make our connections to our aftermarket radio we ran those down up underneath here when the radio was out it makes it nice and easy to get that access then we ran our wire for just tucking it underneath the uh, center console plastic and now we got to fish it underneath the carpet we'll also come out the vent here go right into the RC inputs remote turn on input of the amplifier all right so we went ahead and got everything all mounted in there there's our new amplifier rack it sits in there really nice got everything zip tied and cleaned up um, as for the ground, we went right into the ground terminal, obviously following along. And what we found is this 12 millimeter bolt there. Clean up the paint, put a washer on it, and mounted our ground right to that location. Super easy. Biggest thing here, make sure the paint is all cleaned off. You saw us do the remote turn on wire and RCAs. Now we fit it up and over the seat support. And the access for the carpet that we found was right here. So we fit, fished it up underneath the carpet, and then that's where it came out, got it all nice and zip tied and connected there. So there is our connections, radio's all back in. Now we can connect our positive power wire to the positive post on the right, battery. So we got our positive on there. Got the nice loop that goes down, everything split loomed and zip tied. Um, off camera, we also did a big three upgrade. We Upgraded our ground there, put in a, a fused run all the way to the alternator down there, which is super hard to get to on the V6. And then we did an engine ground as well. So everything is done up underneath the hood here. And when we went ahead and connected that stud there, we removed the negative off the battery, had it off while we did the install, and reinserted that um, positive on that stud there. Once we're all good to go, all said and done, we put the negative back on the battery. At this point of time, we're done underneath the hood. And uh, let's finish up inside. Speak your wire all the way back to the subwoofers here in the trunk. Got everything connected here after we set up our gains. And it's sounding awesome. Everything all back together here. We got everything vacuumed. Seats all back in, bolted up. Let's go ahead and roll it forward for you. Here we are back here. 
With the seat back, it's totally protected up underneath the seat, which is great. Plenty of room for the vent to vent. And uh, you still can get to the uh, all the adjustments on the amplifier, which is perfect. That all turned out super nice and clean. That's about it for this install. Like I said before, we have other videos, a uh, backup camera and a radio install on this Altima. So if you want to see those videos, we will link them down in the description. Like I said, thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe and post great content on the channel all the time. And we'll see you in the next video.